For the following exercises, perform the indicated operation and express the result as a simplified complex number. Okay, so we already did one question like this already in the complex number playlist. So if you want to go view that one, if you haven't already, you can just click on the playlist. The link is in the description below and you can do those problems. But this is question number two of this type. So let's work with the first one. We have to do 2 minus 3i, and that's all being subtracted by 3 plus 2i. Okay, so oop, I don't know why I got rid of that, but we don't want to get rid of what we want to do. So in this case, we're just taking this and we're subtracting it by this. Now, do we really need these parentheses? No, right? Usually we have parentheses when we multiply two things together. But if we're just adding or subtracting, and in this case we're subtracting, we can get rid of these parentheses, but there's a trick here. So the first part would still be two minus three i, right? But when we're minusing this, what's really happening is that there's a secret number here. There's a secret negative one that we're actually multiplying. So we're multiplying this negative one by a three, and by this 2i. So when we take this whole thing out of its parentheses, the signs are going to change because a negative 1 times a 3 is a negative 3 or a minus 3, and a negative 1 times a positive 2i would now be a negative 2i. So that's the trick here. Whenever you have, and I, I can just erase this, whenever you have a subtraction with things in parentheses, you just have to change the sign of both of them. So this was a positive three, it now turns into a negative three, minus three. This was a positive two i, it now turns into a negative two i, or subtract two i. So just know that little hint. That's true for everything, okay? So now we have this bad boy, and all we have to do is simplify. We just have to group like terms together. So it looks like I just have two numbers here without the i's. I have a 2 and I have a minus 3. So if I put those together, 2 minus 3 is a negative 1. And now what else do I have? Oh, I have this negative 3i, and notice how I'm always taking the sign into consideration. So negative 3i, and then I have a negative 2i. I have to add those together. So a negative 3i minus 2i would be a negative 5i. When you're adding or subtracting like terms. Remember, you don't add the i's, so it wouldn't turn into i squared. That's if you multiply. Here, we're just adding the coefficients, a 3 and a 2. Negative 3 minus 2 is a negative 5. And now, we just have to clean this up, right? Simplified complex number is when we have a real value in the front and a real number is just the number, so 2, 3, 4, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And then we have our imaginary number. The imaginary number is the one that has the i in it. So the real number always comes first, and then the imaginary. That's just standard notation. So basically this is the answer. I have my real number in the front, a negative 1, and then I have my imaginary value at the end, minus 5i. And that's it. That's it for the first one. Pretty simple. Now we just have to apply this knowledge to the other ones. But your, your basic math, addition, subtraction, multiplying, and dividing, you use it the same as you would for any problem here. So let's try this one. Negative 4 plus 4i minus negative 6 plus 9i. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get these out of the parentheses. 
So I don't have to do anything to the first ones, negative four plus four I, but now I'm subtracting. There is a secret one here. It's really a negative one times these guys. You just gotta be fair. So you switch the signs in this parenthesis. So this would really be negative one times negative six is a plus six. The negative six turned into a positive six. And then negative one times nine I would be minus nine I. It would be a negative nine I, right? Do you see how this sign changes? It went from a positive, now it's a negative. Now all we have to do is group together the like terms. I see that I have a negative four and I have a plus six. So they go together when we group those together. Negative four plus six, that's a two. And then I have a plus four I hooking up with a minus nine I. They go together. So four I minus nine I, that is negative five I, four minus nine is negative five. And now all we just have to do is clean this up. We put the real numbers in the front. So two minus five I. Look at that guys, pretty simple. Last one. Now this one is set up a little bit differently from the others, but we still use our uh, you know, addition, multiplication, adding and subtracting, division, <laughs> whichever one I didn't say, you know, the, the four functions, to this. So it looks like I have this whole thing in this parenthesis, two plus three i, and I need to multiply it by four i. Okay, now we're multiplying two parentheses together. This is where we have to play fair. What happens is the first term, the two wants to be multiplied by that second parenthesis, but you gotta be fair. If you multiply the first term, you gotta multiply the second term by the same guy. That's what happens when you multiply two parentheses together. Everybody has to get multiplied. They all got to play fair. So let's do the first part. Two times a four I is just an eight I. And then two I times four I, now here we go. I'm gonna, just gonna put it, I'll put it down here. Three I times four I. This is different from three I plus four I, which is what we've been seeing with the last two. If we were just adding them, you just add the, num the numbers, right? The numerators, uh, not the numerators, the coefficients. So this would be 12 I but the I stays exactly the same. I, I, I. But now if you're multiplying the I's, you multiply the numbers, so you still get a 12. However, how many I's did you really have? You had two of them. So this would be I squared. So just know the difference between adding I's together and multiplying them. So this one, three I, times 4i would be a plus 12i squared. Now, it looks like we're in simplified complex number, right? I have an i here and I have an i squared. However, i squareds cannot be in a simplified complex number. You're only allowed one i in your answer. So we have to somehow change this value. And this is where something will come up into your mind and you'll say, oh, wait a minute. I know what I squared really is. I squared really is just a negative one. Memorize this guys. Okay. This is the key to turning in all larger I numbers. So like I squared, I cubed, I to the fourth, I to the fifth. This is the knowledge, and I squared is a secret negative one. So I can break this down. I can say that this really is a negative one. And that was being multiplied by 12. And then the same, right? You have a plus eight I. 
12 times a negative 1 is a negative 12. So you have 8i minus 12 now. Simplified complex number tells me that I need my real number in the front and then my imaginaries. In this case, I have my 12 in the back and my i in the front, so I just have to flip them. So this would be equivalent or equal to negative 12i. I'm just putting the negative in the front. Oh, sorry, negative 12, not negative 12i. Negative 12 in the front, and then the 8i has to go back, right? This was a positive 8i. So I will say plus 8i, and that is your final answer. And that's the answer to all three of them. Guys, what do you think? This is easy. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, and soon to be dividing with i's. Let me know in the comments what you think. Give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out, and subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Uh, it takes two seconds, and I would really, really, really appreciate it. It just gets the the word out there to all students all over the world that, you know, the service exists for all students. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. Keep studying hard and I will see you guys all in the next video. Take care. Bye.